I, I'm not going to speak about very strategy. Why? Because yesterday I explained that for me, uh, the strategy of a museum like our museum, which is a museum of society, is a campaign collection. Why? Because uh, uh, the, the strategy is first to choose a topic, then to elaborate a scientific project, then organize field works in the place where we want to, to study the things, and then at the end, collecting things, collecting things, things representing the, the social fact we want to, to in, integrate in our um, collection, or uh, things which witness things, uh, the, the social fact. So that is a strategy of the museum. But I will give you some data about the ways, the different ways we uh, collect, we integrate assets in uh, our uh, collection in a museum and uh, with some points, some historical point, because uh, I think it's important to uh, situate it, uh, to point out the origin of our, uh, our uh, collections. So, you have the slide, you can read it. We begin at the end of the 19th century, but very few objects, very few for France or for Europe in, at this time. And then after uh, 1936, with the creation of our museum by Georges-Henri Rivière. Georges-Henri Rivière is the hero of our museum, you know, the fundator. And, uh, I want to say something about George Henri Rivière because I forget uh, yesterday. Uh, he is also some a person uh, who organized something very interesting for us for co-collecting, I think, because he, I, I, I think you know that, but in the 70s, he, he elaborates the concept of eco-museum, and I think Eco museum is something, it's a tool. It's a very interesting tool to organize co-collecting, auto-conservation, uh, auto uh, self-conservation for a different community. So it was a parenthesis. So you have some, some ideas of the museum in, in Paris and the increasing of the number of course of the object in our collection. And then uh, the, the period, the Marseillaise period, the period in Marseille, uh, where we are now, uh, and the, the preparation of the, the setting of the museum in another town, Marseille. And then you have on the back of the slide, uh, the store, house for the, of the museum. The, there is the museum near the, near the sea, and in another place, about two kilometers in the, in the land, behind the, the, the railway station, for people who know Marseille, like my friend uh, Stephens, <laughs> uh, the, the storehouse we call the Center for Conservation. And in this place, we have our treasure, our uh, million objects. Our million objects, I said that yesterday, so you, you remember, of course, that we have uh, a few uh, objects uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to 250, 100, 250 thousand objects and three, three dimensional objects and, of course, two dimensional objects, photography, etc., <coughs> which document the uh, facts, the social fact uh, we want to, uh, to have in our uh, collection and to speak about. Where, where, where do the collections come from? I, I showed you this slide yesterday. Uh, from parts from Europe and generally um, 
European assets come from an ancient collection of the Mankind Museum in Paris, the European part of the Mankind Museum in Paris, the other part gates in Quai Branly, as you know. And uh, in the, for the south of the Mediterranean area, we have a few objects, only uh, 11,000, because we begin collecting this kind of objects. The other objects of the ancient collection are still uh, in the uh, Musée du Quai Branly. Some topics uh, we use to, to document in our museum, society document, society museum, so, sorry. And uh, this is the, the department. It, it, the department of the museum, we are about 10 curators, and each curator has a department with a, a thematic department. Some, uh, kind of, the collection is a, uh, ordinary collection for Folk, uh, Volkskunde Museum, of course, and it begins like that. This kind of collection, of course, with documentation is very important for us to have uh, objects we, we, which are not uh, uh, motherless, uh, motherless child objects, you know, and uh, we are with uh, documentation, and an important documentation. Well, yeah, manufacturing processes, of course, is also documentation, and we have a lot of things about craft, of course. Uh, agricultural equipment, workshop, with uh, some uh, installation of uh, insides of houses or workshop inside the museum, the ancient uh, display of uh, the museum in Paris. And a new, new aspect, one minute. And the different ways of acquisition, you know that, but I want to show you the proportions between uh, donation and purchase. So it's always more donation in, the, in our mu museum that, uh, than purchase, different types of purchase. Uh, so in, uh, in the period uh, 1936, Seven to 1971, you know there is a, a lot of acquisitions, and also in the now and now, so uh, 77,000 objects, and with different uh, thematic. So different types. I, I'll finish like that. Legacy, of course, and we have as. In the museum, uh, we have to, to preserve heritage, <laughs> the heritage collections. And uh, purchase from collectors is also very important. I'd give you two examples. Peter's collection, this was a German collector of reliquary, reliquaries. And uh, we have this collection. It's an ancient collection. And uh, one example, 800 hot water bottles. Among them, 300 are uh, recycled bomb shells. So it was interesting for my exhibition about waste and recycling. Auction, of course, but a few objects, but sometimes very expensive, like uh, this uh, object from, from ancient Egypt. I don't give you the price. I, I, I'm not allowed to give you the price. Uh, and sometimes also donations of researchers, of curators. It's interesting to have uh, donations from researchers because researchers come in seminars or in symposium and, and they give us some object, but they collect the object with the documentation. So I think it's very interesting for us to have this kind of donation. And donation from a retired curator so it's very also important and interesting. Sometimes it's a little bit dangerous. And uh, so <laughs> we have an, 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 um, an huge collection of plastic bags and packaging and so on. <laughs> packaging. Uh, yeah. Donation for activists. 
organizations. We, we got um, last month more than 50 um, cardboards, uh, signs, banners, posters collected, which have been collected by an association, a group of activists called uh, Archive Sweepers. And uh, they, they give us this kind of thing, uh, uh, which uh, remains, remains of the, manif the, the comment on dit, manifestation? Bon. Demonstration, sorry. Demonstration uh, we, uh, after the, the bombing of Charlie Hebdo. And barter. I think it's also an interesting thing to, to I, I think you do that also. Barter, you, you, you understand barter? Hmm? To give a new object against an, an, an old one, so this man, you can meet him if you come in museum, he's uh, always there. He sell tea, he sell uh, uh, green tea with mint, with mint, um, Mar Moroccan mint tea. And uh, we, we bought in uh, 2006 this card and, he, and we order a new one and he has now the new one. Maybe we will buy the ancient in a few years, we will see. Contemporary art, but not too much. <laughs> uh, and two, two slides more, more. Uh, and we decide we have two committees, an internal committee with the curators and the scientific team. And this committee um, look at the, the propositions, the donations, and so on. And then we have the acquisition committee uh, in which um, some colleagues of other museum take part. And you can recognize Yves Le Fur on the uh, right of the slide. You, you recognize him? So the, the creator of the Quai Branly, for example. But uh, next uh, committee, maybe you can be invited. Yes. 